here. You know, banning out Danny's Zeri as well as JoJo's LeBlanc, but also throwing a splash here to some of the globals that we saw layered by Evil Geniuses yesterday in their most successful game. Jinx already getting a cheer though. Danny, incredible on the pick Insta yesterday. Insta lock but, though. Wow, yeah. 100 Thieves, very, very quick. Renata, they want some scaling of their own with the Aphelios, perhaps anticipating that EG is going to be looking to play dive. Renata, one of the strongest counter engaged champions in the game, uh, and can definitely enable these snowball -y carries if Aphelios can get ahead to play super aggressive with that W. Yeah, also one of the most prominent range supports in the game right now. Mm -hmm. Not very many other ones aside from Lux have been picked. And if if you're expecting a top catch, if you're expecting another melee matchup there, it does give you advantage for the bottom lane to have the double range here and try and play off of what 100 Thieves have found so much success on, strong bottom lane, focused area team comps. Well, we know what the bottom lanes are going to be, gentlemen, so let's see how else EG wants to structure this composition. JoJo playing to the crowd a little bit here, hovering some picks that we don't expect to see, but there's that Jarvan that's been so powerful in the jungle meta recently. Yeah, it's also quite good versus both Aphelios and Renata. Uh, both of them don't have dashes for themselves, so very good at making early plays as well as targeting some of these low mobility carries. It's going to be interesting to see if they want to try to, you know, match roles here, if they're going to go jungle or if they're going to allow that to follow through. Will be Trundle, looks like here. So, going to be a matching jungle. I do think if you're expecting potentially tanks to come through in the second round as well, that can dissuade things like the Blind Orn. Uh, Orn that has been, of course, rising in popularity throughout playoffs, not only here, but in Europe as well. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting early pick here because if you pick it in the first three then you do put that pressure on eg knowing they will have to blind pick their top lane matchup for yeah. impact and if you yeah. know already you're picking into a tank shredder then it takes away from some of the safer options and so you're left with things like gnar that wouldn't be so heavily affected by it but still can be countered it's really interesting because you know in some ways if you want to get the orn on the side of 100 thieves picking the trundle may actually dissuade eg from picking it and secure it from someday you know and someday has been so good on this pick so I'm curious to see if EG's actually going to ban it out, because I think otherwise, fourth pick, we will see someday just lock Orn. And we'll see it in their bans. It's very telling here. If you ban out Gwen, another one of these Conqueror healing uh, matchups for the top side of the map, that is a protection ban for something like an Orn. They didn't ban out Aatrox, though. And Aatrox is what Impact used to demolish oh, yeah. yesterday. So they did not fully protect themselves no. if they are going to go for the four pick Orn here. Okay, so Azir, Gwen, Victor all banned out. One more to go for EG. Will it be the Orn? Or is something else considered more valuable here? The clock hits zero, the Orianna ban instead. And now we're just finding out does 100 Thieves want to save fifth pick on red side, you know, for top, or is it going to be mid? Uh, TF, if you go TF, it makes me feel like they want to play more a carry style towards top lane. So uh, we'll see if that does actually become the case. Of course, yesterday it was pivotal in, in all of the games and it was picked yeah. on both sides. Uh, and is something that Abadaga does like to play a lot. 100 Thieves in the past had been such a bot side focused team. But as you were saying, Kobe, you know, some days kind of rise has allowed them to play more heavily towards top side. So will it be someday on an island, the 100 Thieves of old making set plays, trying to dive bot, trying to snowball FBI, or are they going to go for a fifth pick carry here? Now that just remains to be seen because a lot of the safe blinds are those things that can be kind of answered by Trundle. And JoJo's next most prominent mid lane pick has been the Rise. You know, yep. LeBlanc is permabanned versus uh, him with the uh, Victor banned out as well. It's instantly into the Rise, right down his comfort level for these picks for mid lane. There are not a lot of surprises that come out from mid lane from him. It's more about how he plays a lot of the matchups, tries to get aggressive. He also roamed a little bit too heavily in previous matchups. Um, dropping many, many waves on Rise to uh, roam to top Farming and kills, bottom. Not minions. So it is <laughs> It is going to be interesting to track with a Rise oh. pick like that. Okay, how, but we got Orn. How much he does give up for a lot of these roams, because those are always the calculations you have to make. And now we might just see the Aatrox. I think we're going to get the Aatrox. Yeah. There it is. So that's going to get locked in. And it, it will be interesting to see, are they going to still try to play towards the Orn or just utilize the Aatrox to that winning 1v1 to push him in, to kind of unlock closer to get done what he wants to do? Uh, because they can try to have these set plays towards bot, try to get FBI ahead. You know, they have the range support advantage, so that should be a winning 2v2, 400 Thieves on the bot side. And Danny, while he was incredible in the team fights, did get taken advantage of multiple times in his series yesterday in bot lane.
And one thing I like here for Evil Genius is you guys talked a lot about how it can feel dangerous to draft Ornn into something like a Trundle because he can shred the tanks, sap the stats. EG has a very tanky lineup yeah. just in general. Rise is tanky, Jarvan is tanky, Tom Kench is tanky. It's not like we only got this one Ornn to front line. It's a meatball comp here for Evil Genius. <laughs> and, and to me, really, my eyes are drawn towards these mid laners. Mid laners for these comps are so pivotal because yeah. both of them are roaming mid laners. So jungle trying to legends itself the game has changed Absolutely. and adapted from when it literally was a small indie game to now the fact that they've kept up with all of that and been good at all of that amazing spring finals game number one with two new franchise organizations eg and 100 thieves none of those old gods are here again azale and one thing that I immediately noticed, look over here on the left, Ripple Inspire spellbook. running Spellbook, Impact running Spellbook, JoJo running Spellbook. There are a lot of surprise punches that can come out from this. Absolutely, and 100 Thieves, five man invade here, level one, not gonna be in any danger of actually getting a, you know, a death, but at the same time, this means Impact can invade Topside now because they had the eyes on that. They can get their own deep wards in, and they do actually ward Raptor Pit, trying to track where Inspired will be. This is very important against the J4 early on because he is one of those big threat early game gankers. Something I saw very early on in playoffs was the importance of these level ones. And 100 Thieves, they get deep vision on Raptors, will have a better uh, job tracking Inspired. It's so important when you are tracking a Jarvan, especially because of the options. So many varied routes possible for this champion to try and influence, especially this mid lane that they want to unlock. And especially when you look at both of these mid laners, Rise and Twisted Fate are very gankable targets. There are no inbuilt escapes on these other than try to throw a gold card or a rune prism to save yourself. But we're not talking about inbuilt mobility. We are talking about pillars and EQs coming out from the Jarvan on the other side. I expect this to be heavily focused. And Jojo is one of those guys to not play these lanes passive. He wants to get the most possible from it. He's going to play in his opponent's face. So far, EG having the push here with the Jinx, you know, shoving in, and we'll see. Some good early trades. And so the information you can gather thus far, 400 Thieves off of their level one, is that they know that Jarvan is not starting on the bottom side. So you can see FBI and Huhi, they're playing aggressively now, trying to abuse their double range matchup here, trading there with Vulcan pretty heavily. However, they know that Jarvan is going to be on route down to bottom side and are going to have to play accordingly. Uh, Trundle heading down as well, you know, potentially there to cover, has actually gone red Raptors, he's going Grom, so he's going to get a fast three with red buff and could potentially come to look, but Danny has eyes on that, you know, he's going to be warding out the river in case of any early shenanigans, Santorin of course known for those, you know, early ganking Trundle plays, and Closer can emulate that too. Down here you're going to oh. see FBI taking a lot of damage, flash out fast, but now the counter attack comes through and oh, it's Danny left with 100 HP! FBI bends the bullet, tags him with the sniper Q around the minion, and Danny goes down. That's why you insta lock the Avelios Renata for 100 Thieves. FBI and Huhi, they're back on the top. First blood, bottom lane for 100 Thieves. Man, Huhi played that so well, landing the handshake, smacking them together, then flashing forward for the ignite after the cleanse had already come down. Closer will cover them on the push, so Vulcan can't actually hold the wave. Danny will arrive to actually collect the farm, but he didn't yeah. have a buy. Your buy is a refillable and a pink ward, and FBI is going to have something much better. It's especially a huge start here for 100 Thieves because people were questioning if 100 Thieves would come out a little slower, not working yeah. their way through the lower bracket. But this instantly gets you up to speed. FBI flashes the W from Vulcan, so only who he gets hit, and then on the exchange going oh. out. Beautiful shot there between the minions off of who he's set up there. And then who he knows, as soon as that sniper Q lands, he can flash forward. The damage will be there. Gets the ignite down. They get the kill. Only thing you can take away from it is that, of course, then the damage in the end goes over from who he and he's the one who gets the actual lion's share of the first blood money. Hey, if that's your biggest problem, you got some first world problems. 100 Thieves starting off good here at four minutes, but now we've already got the play and both sides are getting involved. Abadaga is going to be taken low, but the counterattack comes out and it's JoJo killed first. 100 Thieves are up to nothing.
This Renata from Huhi again. The counter engage from Renata on display. Every chance he gets. Bottom lane 2v2. Boom, first blood. And then counter gank in mid lane. Both supports are thinking the same thing. Both supports are on that window, that timer for mid, and they collide. Again, 100 Thieves coming out on top. And Huhi's playing it out so well. I mean, as soon as he puts the W on Abadaga, you can no longer try to burst this guy down. He's just going to come right back up. But he lands the handshake once more, smack them together for the stun. This Renata is so effective in these early minutes already. We already need to praise 100 Thieves for what able, they were able to learn after just watching Evil Geniuses and preparing a plan for what they expect to see here. Lots of hard engage, lots of uh, melee champions, and they've been able to so far execute on their game plan. Five minutes in, 1.3 thousand FTX gold advantage is nothing to scoff at. 100 Thieves are loving this early game so far. They are responding well to that EG aggro, that early aggressive type of laning these guys like to play. 100 Thieves seem to have it figured out. Closers hanging around here in the bottom side now. Flies over, should have just barely been seen yep, by the edge marking. of that ward, so he won't get the drop on him. A flying trundle's been <laughs> sighted, my friend. Flying trundle through the brush. Uh, well done there for EG bottom lane. But of course, they also, off of that play, do have the flash advantages. So mm -hmm. 100 Thieves know and Closer knows. He's going to have to do some defensive work around bottom side. That's why he goes for the pass around bottom. He knows that his bottom lane, as they're pushing out, will be a bit vulnerable, even though they got the early kills. EG has done a good job, though, with this warding in the river. You know, multiple wards there, tracking Closer, moving back and forth. But with the push, they're just going to start up Dragon here. I don't think EG will look to contest. They do have mid shove and J4 is in the area, so we'll see if they want to move over and try to get something done. They have to know that this is going on right now, and yeah. four members strong moving that way. They've got mid push. 100 Thieves still on the Drake, still looking to commit, but over the wall, Inspire's ready to go. It will be secured by Closer and 100 Thieves, but FBI is already going to be taken very low, and he won't be able to be saved. Closer now about to drop. Evil geniuses punish the play as the Orn Horn sounds, and Abadaga flashes away, but you can't say the same for who he that's a free kill play for EG in true Danny fashion are you kidding me he gives up first blood but then collects the kills on Jinx getting both those kills and impact early TP to bot side there's no way 100 Thieves expected that this is not unleashed TP it's six minutes in he PPs defensively to their tower and is still able to get involved I will say that then during this replay we expect Aatrox to get a turret plate on top side and push in those minions since the teleport was used but first things first smite secure on the dragon closer does get it but EG was such a good flank around the back of Zale. And FBI didn't have sums from the previous play, so he gets taken out almost immediately, and then Impact arrives on the teleport, forces the flash from Avadaga, CCs up Huhi, and you can tell they're giving it to Danny. They yeah. know this is the guy you need to get fed. He just got paid. He's now ahead of FBI here. And that spells scary, scary things for 100 Thieves, who you know were watching this guy cleaning up every single game yesterday. And in this graph, I love the fact that we see similar values between mid laners, 80 carries. A lot of damage came out from Inspired in that one as well. The Jarvan being a big part of being able to take those health bars low, make that fight go their way. That gold lead, Kobe, that you mentioned, man, five minutes, one and a half thousand, that feels pretty good. Well, it feels pretty bad when it disappears like a magic trick. And the, especially the thing is where exactly the gold goes, because it was basically funneled onto Danny. He is at the top of the FTX gold graph on your uh, left in the screen here. And we just saw yesterday the things that this kid can do on this champion. FTX total gold on the left side of your screen right now. It's Danny topping the charts exactly how EG wants it to be on this hyper carry marksman in bottom lane. With Abadaga missing for mid though, they have no more wards in the river. So EG has to retreat because they don't know if a four man dive is coming. They're going to have to wait until they see TF and try to reestablish vision in that bot side river with Inspired to protect their 2v2. Because for now, they're just giving up camps, they're giving up farm, they're gonna wait for Inspired to actually move down here to protect any potential dive. Yeah, what they have to get to is a next safety threshold, which is Vulcan's level six for Tom Kench to be able to protect against the second mm -hmm. Twisted Fate ultimate. Abadaga's cooldown now comes up, but 
Jojo Pion's Realm Warp will also shortly follow that cooldown, so uh, he should be looking at getting mid push first. Which you, what we'll see is a lot of investment of resources of extra champions roaming towards mid lane to help push these mid laners out first so that you can get the initiative, you can get the first move in creating the play for your team. And it'll be interesting to see if EG want to go for this Herald here early because they've committed a lot of wards towards that top side. They had three control wards on that top side river, one just getting cleared out, I believe, there by someday. Uh, but a lot of vision up there, both teams seem like they want to be heading over. 100 Thieves have the faster reset, though, and they're going to be out on the map starting this up already. But it looks like EG sending their bot lane there, too. And you can see it from the support timers there. Huhi now in mid lane trying to get level 6. He absorbs level 6 experience off of that wave. He's going to have the advantage here. Okay, 100 Thieves have it started up. The eyeball is ready to be hit, but they're not hitting it just yet. Okay, that one's gonna get proc now. Eyeball will not show again. It's low enough HP. That's not gonna pop up. Super Mega Death Rocket thrown out into the mix, and now the Twisted Fate ulti's gonna be coming in. Jojo taking the Realm Warp, looking to find his way into the other side, but the burst comes out. He's gonna be taken low, but he's not gone yet. Closer flashes away. Someday kill Jojo. 100 Thieves have found the mid laner and haven't lost a man just yet, but FBI finally oh, lost the impact. The impact's dead now with a double kill back over to Sunday. Inspire jumps in and closes under pressure. 100 Thieves getting themselves away. Got no Danny flash. still looking to make the moves. The Rockets onto Abadaga. They just want to give the kill over to Danny. <laughs> oh, just playing with them. Like shooting fish in a barrel there for Danny. He outranges the gold card for so long. Weaving in these rockets, EG again funneling more money into their pentakill AD carry. And they're gonna get the push on top here. They're gonna be at least able to pick up all of this wave before they reset. Danny getting very, very strong. Will for sure have his mythic on base. And you can see pinks over onto this dragon. 100 Thieves wanna try to reset and go towards this next. It is very worth mentioning though that Aatrox can be a mid game carry. Someday collected two kills here. Mm -hmm. So watch the Aatrox, watch Someday from the 100 Thieves side because they also get two extra kills for themselves. The smite goes down, they get the Rift Herald, FBI is able to claim it. The ultimate comes through and they zone him out. And Jojo takes the initiative, goes right in, gets gets the zone just to buy a little bit of time, but Someday immediately flashes him, gets that kill, and chases him down. And Someday flashing forward there actually was so critical because there were so many low health bars on 100 Thieves, and that actually zoned Danny out. It forced the usage of Vulcan's ult defensively there, pushed him back, and does end up saving at least a couple of them as Closer and Huhi are able to get away on really low health bars. So even though this money for EG goes in the correct place, they get the money on to Danny, 100 Thieves got the majority out of it because they also got Rift Herald. Yep. Two for two trade, and Rift Herald is in the hands of FBI, the Aphelio. So bottom lane Rift Herald play can come through. More turret play money for him. Exactly. Normally you see these Heralds in the hands of a jungler. AD carry's not going to be roaming around the map as much. We would expect to see this squad try to play around that. Second Drake of the game now alive, and it's evil geniuses starting this one up first. Yeah, 100 Thieves in the area, though. Both teleports are online, but it looks like Impact is the one cheating down. I think 100 Thieves are just going to give this up, try to trade for some gold on the top side with someday having the push. It's worth noting that Trundle is going a less common build. You know, we mostly see Divine Sunder in pro play, but he is going Iceborne here, full on tank, you know, knowing that it's just going to be more about, you know, being that frontliner for the team. You go build tank, you ult the Orn, and you try to be that true frontline. And it's trying to peel is what it is, creating those slow feels for FBI. They know FBI is the win condition for 100 Thieves. He is the one that is going to push them across the finish line. He has to peel for FBI. If that Aphelios can stay auto attacking for 100 Thieves, they can can win. Someday is going to do his best here towards the mid stages, this fed Aatrox, but they know FBI, he's the DPS for later. And that's the story for both of the teams with these 80 carries, but now they got to be a little bit careful. Vulcan keeping Danny nice and safe there. Yes, the Berserk hits, but when there's nothing for him to go after, it won't lock him down. Nice attempt, though, from who he uses the handshake, pulls Danny into the tower as the minions are getting cleared out, right into the Berserk. It was good timing, though, from Vulcan. You know, if he's a little bit slow on that, doesn't get the Devourer before it hits him, could have been in trouble. Closer now, wrapping around, Ooh. looking for the dive. Closer is hungry for this one, and he's bringing everybody to dinner. Abadaga shows up for the gold card over the wall, but Impact <laughs> just swag walks out of it. Did you see that? The fastest Orn I've ever seen! <laughs> Spellbook Ghost Baby popped up there by Impact, and that is a quick moving Forge God. Man, as his Nike's on, he's out of there, but they are going to lose a lot of plates on top side. The Gore Drinker was already done for someday and he's getting more and more gold injected they drop Harold here it's Danny collecting solo gold on bot side 
Will he actually be able to beat this out? I think the charge will go off, and Hunter Thieves should get first power, but that yep. is close. They got it by just Very a close. couple of seconds, and both of these turrets will also critically fall before 14 minutes. Plates are gone as of now, but they got all those plates from the different sides. Impact's trying to go after FBI oh, no, here. No. Follow-up coming in from Vulcan, and FBI gets knocked on over. Catfish delivery service, the knock-up from the Ord straight into Vulcan there, knocking him up, CC chaining him down. I don't think he even realized he was in, in kill threat there with just these two lower damage carries. Uh, but they take him down. Yeah, very good counter there from Evil Geniuses, because recounting, they got the Jinx push on bottom side while Aphelios uses the Rift Herald on top side, and that tower is about to die anyway. Mm -hmm. So that Rift Herald actually did not get much value. And Danny got all of the solo gold. So even though Hunter Thieves got more gold from the play because they got first tower, it's all concentrated on Danny, which makes it that much more valuable. He actually already hit his second item. We can watch this one more time. Impact setting up with the ulti, Vulcan following through. Yeah, long range there during the knockup, able to layer the W knockup from Vulcan. There's zero chance FBI gets out of that one. Yeah, he spent more time in the air than he did on the ground, and as soon as he came back down, he's right in the dirt. Beautifully coordinated there from EG. And now 15 minutes into the game, plates are gone, laning phase is over. How are we feeling about the game state between these two with only 200 gold separating? I mean, I just think that the gold is in a better place for EG. I think the fact that Danny is already on two items, he's going Kraken, so he's a very high DPS build here. If they can keep him safe and he's free firing, he will shred through the champions that 100 Thieves has. 100 Thieves down just the smallest amount of gold, about a can of minion or so. Both teams also critically on one Drake. Means mm -hmm. nobody's got that advantage towards looking for a soul stack or anything in what has become an infernal soul game. And we've got a minute and a half to look forward to that. So what you critically need to do now is utilize the threat of your globals to push out these side waves so you can set up for a better start on that objective. EG are moving as a group to get vision right now, uh, retaken across this river in setup, in preparation for the dragon. 100 Thieves, you see Abadaga pushing down topside. Twisted Fate Ultimate is available for him to get out. All right, walking over a ward right now. EG is going to start up the second Rift Herald. We'll see if 100 Thieves uh, decides they want to go all in to stop this one. They do have Someday on the bottom half of the map. Impact down there as well. Both top laners have unleashed teleports available for this one. That's the difference between this and some previous fights we've seen. Keep your eyes on that, but it doesn't look like the Thieves are willing to contest this one. So that second Herald goes over to EG. Eyeball on Inspired. All right, now 37 seconds left on the transition over to Dragon. JoJo's pushing top, but he does have unleashed teleport ready. So Evil Geniuses can make the journey over to this side of the map. And it looks like we're going to have another big brawl. Again, EG sweeping in, clearing out all of this vision as they move to set up. 100 Thieves. OK, Sweeper from Abadaga is going to see Vulcan prowling through the jungle there. He's there too. The catfish has been caught a little bit. Of course, that's not the target you can engage on. So it's easy to, enough to walk away. And they actually commit. Look at where they're sending Danny right now. They're committing Danny to more money. They are actually foregoing the dragon setup. Yep. Evil Geniuses once again will make this choice. This has been true so frequently throughout playoffs for the Evil Geniuses. For going early dragons, getting money instead where they need it on their scaling champions on their carries. And they're even going to actually escort it in for the tier two charge here. You can see Vulcan and Inspired shadowing Danny, allowing him to collect this additional wave, get that charge out. And if Hunter Thieves don't commit enough members up here to defend, they could potentially look for the push, but they're going mid. All righty, FBI trying to get himself away. The flash gets him out. Last time around, FBI did not flash the Orn ultimate, and he 100% to zero died for it. So he he had that in the back of his mind, and this time around, he ends up using Gale Force and Flash to escape it. So hugely oh. high high value Orn ultimate from Impact, and it also allows Danny to take the whole secondary turret on top side. Those things are worth 800 gold now with the increase in local. And he just got both of those towers. The first one was isolated solo gold. The second one was shared, but Danny's going to have at least a BF on base, if not BF plus tier two boots. Uh, he is going to be very quickly on three items. And that weighs so much more heavily on the state of the game than this Infernal Drake does. Yes, it will go over to the Thieves, but this Jinx is quickly becoming the main character of game one. Okay, boys, I'm hearing a lot of arcane talk right now, but let me remind you of Someday status. Okay. Someday on 100 Thieves, best split he has ever had. Hard carry for this team on Aatrox. Huge lead for him through the mid game. 
We can definitely focus as much as you want on Danny, but if Someday gets the flank, Someday can wreck house. He is two item power spike already on Aatrox, well above the curve of this game. Gore Drinker and Death Dance and Stopwatch. St Someday can be the hero 400 thief. Absolutely, and it's gonna really come down to which team can enable those carries best. Can you actually deny vision or find a TP flanking ward for Someday, set him up for success? And on the other side, can you actually keep Danny safe and with enough space to fire? Completing the Thorn Mail here, I think, is actually pretty important for Impact because any CC he applies to Someday will put that Grievous Wounds offensively now, you know, with this item, which is so big to actually being able to knock down that Aatrox. Right, that's one of the big things about Bramble Vest is you don't have the ability to apply the Grievous Wounds oh, proactively. That chain is big. Someday's in some trouble. Where is it going to be? He gets away for now. Doesn't even have to use the Flash, but the ulti's gone. Evil Geniuses are now going to put some damage into the Tier 2 in bottom. Yeah, they're still rewarded with not only push on bottom, but also mid here, JoJo moving up. So a very well-timed, again, Orn ultimate from Impact. They saw the Trundle early in draft. They don't care. Shred my armor. Who cares? The Trundle uh, doesn't even matter. The Orn ultimates have gotten so much value for EG. And I've really liked how Impact has moved around the map. His first TP of the game was the bot lane. I can't even remember the last time I saw that, you know, out of an Orn. It's almost yeah. a default TP back to top, wait for the Unleashed Teleport. But he knows it's not about the 1v1. He's not built to actually win in that 1v1. He just needs to get his XP, get a little bit of gold, move around the map, and enable his carries. Team play, go usher those young kids over the finish line. <laughs> yep. Go over and support JoJo, support Danny, as so many in the crowd have done. Grandpa Impact never misses one of his grandson's games. He's <laughs> always there to support him. He's always ready to go. And he knows that this is Danny World. All they got to do is get him going. That BF sword will be in an infinity edge before too much longer. Exactly what I was looking at. Like, this is a very early three item power spike for Jinx. Once you get infinity edge, becomes a whole different monster. And we're, we're all of the same mind because I'm, I'm looking at near an IE. I'm looking at two and a half minutes here. He should have the IE prior to that next dragon fight. And I think that's where EG are really going to look to challenge around the dragon here. Stop the dragon stacking that 100 Thieves has going on. They don't want to allow them to get to soul point and have that as a potential win condition. And I just want to reiterate again though the map movements from this team and moving impact to zone off hundred thieves and continually increase this lead getting mm -hmm. objective after objective you know forcing out summoner spells and gale force cooldown from FBI and then moving up being able to get that mid outer tower for themselves they're not separating to allow for an Aatrox flank to allow for one of these melee threats to really take over they are grouping up they are protecting their carries and we've been seeing Anathema's chains become so much more popular. I think it's especially effective in a game like this, where really late game, it's up to FBI to get the damage done. So you have the yeah. Anathema's, you strap that onto the Aphelios, you have that additional CC layering onto him. You know, if the Rise can flash in and get that Rune Prison, or, or Orn can land a CC chain, he will be in trouble. All right, gentlemen, we find ourselves oh. once again 90 seconds away from the next big objective fight, and we find ourselves looking at that Infinity Edge completed versus what appears to be two bow and arrows, one a Gale Force <laughs> and one a Last Whisper. <laughs> One of these things is not like the other. Yeah, an item and a half ahead right now for Danny. And what does that do to your game plan for 100 Thieves? They literally have to kill Danny or all is lost. Everybody in the entire game, all 10 players, looking at the positioning of this Jinx and of Vulcan, the Tom Kench, his biggest safety net. And that allows people like JoJo to position more aggressively because if you're drawing them onto you, you're buying time for your carry. You know, we talked about them having triple spellbook. You can have more exhaust to help deal with any potential dive. We see a heal on Inspired. That's going to be valuable because they have no heal from the bot lane. If Impact or JoJo can swap over to exhaust and shut down someone like Someday with that exhaust, that is so powerful for the team fight. And the utility of this summoner is, is really useful. Plus, it goes back to what I was talking about at the end of the draft. This is Jinx, and count with me, boys. One, two, three, four meatballs. <laughs> it doesn't matter if any of these meatballs die. As long as Jinx is alive, the game is done. They're all happy to throw themselves into the grinder. And a Fortitude Elixir, even to, to, to further your point, it's tank build rise with the tank elixir. He doesn't even go for the true damage sorcery elixir. So JoJo is of the same mind. Everybody on this team is aligned. They're going to get this dragon. They've got control of the map. And 100 Thieves would really, really be in error if they went to contest this with no vision. Yeah, they didn't have the setup. You know, I like the ult from Danny earlier, actually just delaying the recall from FBI. Makes his reset a little bit late there. He does complete his second item, so that is critical. Uh, but still, you know, 100 Thieves losing control of the map here. 
We'll see oh. if they can find some sort of an X Factor play. I mean, they, they do have Huhi with this ultimate. If they can catch someone critical. Nope, doesn't happen. JoJo gets caught for just a moment, but the rest yeah. of G falls back in time. They're not in any danger. You really want to catch the Jinx with that, because Jinx is, is almost purely auto attack based, and Renata's ultimate is much more powerful against champions that are not spell based. Right. Because if you can get that Jinx, and she is excited, the auto attacks can shred through her own team just as easily as they can shred through yours. Yeah, and we also saw the pitifully slow movement speed of that spell, mm -hmm. really reiterating how it is oh, so much Sunday. better as a counter. All right, they're ready to go. JoJo's got the Rune Prison on Sunday, but he's flying away as fast as he can there with the World Ender. That's no Aatrox ultimate here for a short amount of time. EG with control over the top side river. Closer just throwing that control ward in the Baron pit, making sure EG's not getting a little bit too ready to go for the big object. This is quite possibly at 24 and a half minutes, the about to be the most powerful Jinx that I've seen in a very long time because yeah. not only was he funneled, and it's just a three kill Jinx, it's not like he got a crazy number of kills, but so much local gold on towers, solo gold on towers, turret plates, and he has an Orn on his team. So not even in the gold value, Impact now will be able to upgrade for Danny and just further boost the damage of this Jinx. I mean, this is, it's, it's reminiscent of, of how RNG would play with Uzi, where you're just yeah. feeding him any stacked wave. You know, yes, Impact is down 70 CS, but guess what? Your Marksman is ahead 70 CS, and he scales better with that gold. You so, take that trade. Exactly. You know, so Impact is taking the L, but they're giving it to Danny, you know, which is going to pay off in the long run. He's completing those additional items faster. He's getting more experience. He's getting ahead, really, in every conceivable way. And that's what 100 Thieves have to figure out some way to get around. Because we're just going to keep going forward with EG playing like this. We're just going to keep going forward with secret service detail for the Jinx and everybody making sure he's in the right spot. And after yesterday, boys, <laughs> I don't think there's any doubt in anyone's mind that this kid can carry it. A cool thing that has happened because of the run that EG have had throughout playoffs is that Nobody gives up on evil geniuses when they get behind anymore in the early game. Nobody, everybody shrugs it off. They're like, yeah, I've seen him get first blooded in lane in three minutes before. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You know, an EG. A good Pentat Baron angle <laughs> yeah. here, you know. They still continue, exactly. That's, that's step one in the formula for Baron Pentas. But on the other side, someday continuing the item progression, you know, he is two levels up on impact, you know, highest level in the game, actually two levels ahead of anyone on EG, and does have the GA, so he is going to have that super powerful one fight. Uh, it's just going to be the question of when 100 Thieves do pull the trigger. So what they need to do for 100 Thieves is aggressively push out the side lane so they can twist and bait ultimate on somebody. If they do not do that, there, there's not really going to be a way that they can easily win a five on five. Mm -hmm. Because of the power of Danny right now, he's actually so well protected in addition to how much damage he can put out. Because not only does he have a lot of tanks on his team for the resistances, but they all have CC to be able to peel for him and create space for him. So yeah. 100 Thieves need to utilize the map to their advantage. And we're getting to the point here soon. I'm expecting that next cape in Danny's inventory to turn into an LDR. That means he'll be able to punch through some of this armor. Guardian Angel, Death's Dance, all of this stuff is not going to matter nearly as much. And then it... I don't understand how they're ever going to be able to get through this in a 5v5. They must take an unfair fight. It has to be in the setup for 100. Yeah, it has to be some sort of a flank. You know, if you were to win in the 5v5, you know, get a flanking angle here from someday. Abadaga TP's in on top. You know, you find that sort of a play where you can stun him and burst him down. But Vulcan has to be separated for that to really work because you right. have that get it a jail free card. So it's very difficult. Um, but thus far, it's 100 Thieves focusing more now towards that Baron side of the map. They were dominating Vision there. You can see EG was a little bit worried about a potential Baron rush. Danny scouted that out with his ult, and then EG move in in force to retake Vision. I will say one nice thing for 100 Thieves is that they didn't have to fight, as we see the first Twisted Fate ultimate just for Vision. They did not have to fight on that monumental AD carry item difference. Yep. And we are quickly approaching the point where FBI will also get his Infinity Edge. So while Danny will still be ahead, the breakpoints in the game in the itemization are really what matters. And once FBI well, gets looking for JoJo's Infinity going. Edge. Oh, someday with the dash over the wall, but now a different fight has already started. Danny grabbing the auto attacks. The range of the rockets has found closer. And the super mega death rocket claims his life. There's Impact the over on the FBI. He's trying to get away, but he cannot do it. Renata Holt is too little, too late. And it's three for nothing, EG. EG get the tier two. They could go straight to Baron here if they want. They could even probably take both. They're sending Rise to Dragon. The rest go to Baron here. EG are running away with it now. They can take whatever they want. They will actually take all of the above. 
yes for them. Ward down on bottom side. Jojo just leaves the controller by Dragon, goes for the minions. They clean up this bear and no chance at a steal for 100 Thieves. Someday is trying to head off and head to the dragon. So the yeah. one kernel maybe for 100 Thieves, but they also do not have Smite there. Closer is now leaving base. Looks like, okay, we're gonna see Jojo go ahead and head back. Someday does not want to risk starting up the dragon himself they have, out on a backup. The 100 Thieves have no deep vision. Yeah. So they, they don't know that they could try and rush something here. So TP does come in. Closer, you can again. see him on the map heading over to the dragon and both smites will be here. One critical thing, no summoners on Danny. This may be the last chance potentially 400 Thieves to try to take this guy down if you can punish that. Someday's looking for a flanking angle. It does have his GA. It Let's see how it plays out. TP coming in. Danny firing off the Super Mega Death Rock, and it's going to be stolen from the LEC MVP as they make their entry. JoJo's got the lockdown on Abadaga, but he will Morning be able to get away. Someday's coming in from behind, but EG can only go forward. Knock, knock, FBI. It's Danny. Double kill to start off the fight, and he ain't done yet. Inspired chases who he as Abadaga tries to get away. Someday might be a raid boss, but EG ready to go mythic. Go for the Abadaga tries to run. Inspired just flexes on him, and EG just won the game. You can run, you can hide, but Danny is coming for you. EG marching down mid. They're going to take game number one. Realm at the same time, get right up to the turrets, and game one is already but to memory. Evil geniuses are not here to mess around. What a game from EG here. And now 100 Thieves, I think, have got to be thinking about mixing things up. I feel like one of their biggest strengths is Closer's aggression. And putting him on the trundle felt like it did hamstring what he could get done in that early game. When I think back to you know their title last year, when I think back to the earlier games that they've had in this playoff run, it's often Closer having incredible success throughout the early game, making trips up there constantly towards that top lane. And I think you, you you give up a lot by going for the trundle. Even if it's good for your comp, it's maybe not good for closer. Also, this is as much counter in draft as we've seen put into counter rank Orn. Yep. A trundle yeah. ultimate and an Aatrox lane matchup counter. And yet still, it really did not even leave a mark. Impact did not care. He was still such a high value player for this team. Every Orn ultimate getting summoner spells out of the AD carry or outright killing the AD carry, getting them objectives. So. That attempt at the counter in draft did not work out in execution, and it has to be changed as well. It's the impact X factor. The dude doesn't need to be the hero. He doesn't have to have yeah. top billing. He can play Grandpa Orn coming down to see his kids in bottom lane with a not unleashed teleport. It doesn't matter. This guy always steps up in the biggest moment. And, and I love that he's even building for that, right? Like his third item is Knight's Vow. It's just about yeah. Danny. He knows the game is not about him. He does not have to win in the 1v1. He, he just has to protect towers, clear out some waves, and move to his team, create space for his carry. The whole team from EG had such a cohesive plan. Even though Danny dies early, it just doesn't matter because they put all of their effort from all five members into funneling gold into him, putting him ahead, because they know in team fights he is just on another level. My friend, everyone in the LCS, everyone in this stadium knows that the game is about Danny. Both teams, they're all focused on him, 